Today I'm going to show you how to drain the deep and visceral abdominal lymph nodes. This is a very important first step when you're treating your patient with peripheral edema. There's a large proliferation of lymph nodes in the abdominal cavity and by stimulating them, getting them ready to receive fluid, you're stimulating lymphangioactivity, you are increasing um, hydraulic pressure changes in order to affect changes from the peripheries like the feet or the arms and you are creating a pressure gradient where lymph can flow, return and be excreted in a more natural manner. I'm going to show you first the drainage of the visceral ab abdomen. This is a very gentle maneuver. We, we go from, right, from left to right, beginning above the left pelvic crest, moving to below the left rib cage, the navel, below the right rib cage, and above the right pelvic crest. It's approximately the shape of the letter M. As this is a visceral maneuver, it's very, very gentle, only a skin mobilization. I've delineated where your arrows might lead you, semicircle, going up towards the navel and having a vacuum effect on the way back in order to have those hydraulic changes. You want to place your hand above the pelvic crest, not on the bony prominence as that can be uncomfortable for your patient, and begin your semicircles. Once you see the skin mobilizing, you know that you're going, you're doing it correctly. Approximately one mobilization per second and you can do this five or ten times. Your hand will then move to its next position which is right below the rib cage. Again you don't want to go on the rib cage as pressure on the bony prominence will be uncomfortable for your patient but right below like so. In your patient that doesn't have abdominal edema, the difference between position one and position two may overlap. However, in your patient that does have either a large panis or diffuse abdominal edema, you can also use two hands to get this maneuver in order to mobilize as much skin as you possibly can. Position three is right above the navel. We're gonna do our semicircles. Make sure your hand is not sliding on the skin. You want to use your hand to mobilize the skin. Again, this is an extremely light maneuver. You cannot go too light. Our next position at the right under the rib cage. And lastly, the right over the pelvic crest. I'm using the line of my pinky finger to show me where my hand should be placed. Once you've finished stimulating the visceral or the superficial lymph nodes of the abdomen, you're then ready to stimulate the deeper lymph nodes. The deeper lymph nodes are in the organs, beneath the intestines, and so on. In order to stimulate those, we cannot just go skin deep. We need to use the pressure of the abdominal cavity to put pressure on those lymph nodes in order to affect lymphangioactivity, and a hydraulic change. You want to first ask your patient to bring their knees up. Yep, both of them. And you're gonna coach your patient through diaphragmatic breathing. When, 
oftentimes how I do this is I ask my patient to take a deep breath in through their mouth and try to push my hand up as they do. Bringing the knees up helps keep the belly nice and soft and you're going to get more range of motion. So again, try to breathe up and bring your belly up as you do. I'm not giving any resistance at this point, just using my hand as a tactile cue to get the patient to breathe all the way down to their diaphragm. And you can see through the movement of my hand, the range of motion we're getting here. Keep on going. Once your patient has been coached through diaphragmatic breathing, if they don't have any abdominal precautions, such as hernia, aortic aneurysm, pregnancy, and so on, you may apply resistance to the diaphragmatic breathing. At which point I say to my patient, I want you to keep breathing like so. And as you try to inhale, I'm going to give you resistance. Then as your patient inhales, you resist the motion coming up. And as they exhale, you can gently burrow your hands into the viscera. Bear in mind you are not pushing on the patient, but instead simply resisting the motion of their diaphragm as they try to inhale. I tend to do this 10 repetitions with my patient and then allow them to breathe normally for a while. Once they're getting used to this and, and know how it works, I start to coach them in doing resisted diaphragmatic breathing to themselves. So again, I'm gonna have you take a deep breath down to your belly. Do you feel that? And I coach them hand over hand to do the resistance. That way they're affecting the deep abdominal lymph nodes. And as they continue with this for three sets of 10, I can begin to move on to peripheries. So that is how that is the sequence for deep and visceral abdominal lymph drainage. Again, a, a very important, significant first step in all edema treatment uh, and manual edema mobilization. Please go to arcseminars.net or our YouTube page to see more videos of how to treat edema and tips of what therapists need to know.